Come on and just clap your hands one more time. Hallelujah. My God. God is a good God. Uh, I say God is a good God. He's brought us from a mighty long way. How many of you know he brought you from a mighty long way? Uh, the Bible says that we were dead in our trespasses and sin. Uh, but when Jesus died, he quickened us. He gave us an opportunity to have life. And that more abundantly. We give God praise on today. Come on, just give him one more praise. There's a praise down in my soul. Uh, is there a praise down in your soul? Hallelujah. Are you glad? Thank you, Lord. Glad to be here. Thank you, Jesus. Glad to be here. My God, my God. I'm thinking a couple things going through my mind. The prayer request of Sister Cora about faith. Amen. You don't want to lose your faith. Hallelujah. Because you got to walk through that valley of the shadow of death by faith. Amen. You've got to believe and trust in your God by faith. And when we're living in a world, we're living in a world today wherein faith is not as uh, 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 celebrated. Thank you, Lord. People will turn to their own selves but not turn to God. But aren't you glad that you can turn to him? Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord one more praise. Thank you, Jesus. And we certainly, we certainly do praise and thank God. How many of you went on that fast on uh, Thursday? That was a good fast. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praying for the health and the well-being of the people of God. Praying for our strength. Our renewed power. Amen. The young man was uh, preaching on yesterday. and I surely stirred up my soul. And in the, the midst of it, the midst of it, the praise and the worship, somebody yelled out, Lord, send a revival. Amen. And I thought in my mind, Lord, you can send a revival even in this? Hallelujah. The Lord can send a revival, can't he? Even in this. Hallelujah. We're living... We're living in the last days, but that doesn't mean it's over. The Lord is still pouring out his spirit. Lord, send a revival. Amen. Lord, send a renewing. Lord, send a refreshing down on us. So we certainly do thank God for those that went on a fast. And we're going to go back on our fast and praying uh, on this coming Thursday from uh, midnight on Thursday until 4 p.m. on Thursday. Amen. Fasting and praying, uh, seeking the face of God. And um, I'm reminded of uh, Sister Louise. She always uh, put that scripture in my mind about uh, King Solomon. How King Solomon prayed and asked God about, Lord, I want to know how to go in and out before your people. Amen. When Solomon was about to be elevated uh, and, and build God and house and get things together and do great exploits in the sight of the Lord. He prayed and asked God for wisdom. So let us, church, let us pray and ask God for wisdom. Amen. So the Lord will show us how to go in and out. So the Lord will teach us great and wonderful and mighty things. One thing that is for certain, I'm going to get into the message, but one thing that is for certain that we have never been through this, what we're going through before. But the Lord has, because the Bible says he declared the end from the beginning. So even in this was a plan of God. Even in this, God has allowed it. I'm not saying that this corona is from God. I'm not saying that the upheaval that we're experiencing is from God. But I'm saying it didn't catch God by surprise. Come on, give God a praise. And with every temptation, the Bible says that he has already made a way of escape. So let us pray. The Bible says that if any man lack wisdom, let him do what? Let him do what? Are you asking of God? Are you seeking God? <laughs> Y'all gonna leave me out there by myself. <laughs> are you asking? How many are seeking God on today? Hallelujah. Asking God, Lord, show us the way. Show us the way. Lord, open up our understanding. I was standing on my porch. Uh, it was probably close to midnight. And that's the time I like to 
draw closer to God. Probably it was about 11 o'clock or so. I'm drawing close to God, and, and it hit me. Lord, you show us the way. Lord, you open up our understanding. Lord, you give us what we need to survive this situation. Lord, you open up and bless us and give us what we need to endure uh, so we can come out on top. The scripture came to my mind, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who abradeth not that give it to every man liberally. Amen. But we have to ask in faith. Amen. We have to believe our God. We have to trust in our Lord. Come on and give the Lord one more praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is an opportunity we don't want to waste. This is an opportunity that we don't want to waste. This is an opportunity that we don't want to waste. So let us draw our hearts nearer and closer unto the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm excited on today because God is great and his mercy endured forever. Uh, let me get a different mic. One and give me one of the other mics that we have there. Amen. We certainly praise God. We praise him for all that he is and that all that he is doing. Truly, the Lord is merciful. There you go. That sounds a little bit better. The Lord is merciful and he's gracious to each and every one of us. Amen. And we certainly don't want to be remiss in our acknowledgments. And we want to thank God for Crystal Tull being in our midst on today. Amen. Sister Crystal and her lovely daughter Parker. Amen. Let us give God a praise for them. All the way from Syracuse, New York. Amen. So we certainly do praise God. We praise God. And um, Shaniqua, Sister Shaniqua kind of cracked me up a little bit. She said, uh, give a celebration. She called her daughter Sister Freedom. <laughs> I said, she a sister already. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And that's what we do. Train them up. Amen. And give God praise and give God glory. Amen. So I don't want to be before you long on today, but we certainly do have a word from the Lord. And we certainly do praise God for all of his goodness and his mercy. Amen. And I want to encourage uh, all of you as well uh, to tune into our council coming on this week. Uh, Thursday, I'm sorry, Friday and Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, District Elder Daryl Fair, he'll be preaching on this Friday uh, during that council session. We have empowerment sessions and um, I also tune in uh, our first lady, uh, Lady Tracy Quinn. She did an empowerment session recording. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm trying to push her out there. I said today. Oh, you too. Amen. 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 Iron sharpened the line. Thank you, Lord. I told her this morning, I said, honey, you need to do a Tracy's Corner. Do it every week. Just do a Tracy Corner. Thank you. She was sitting in the corner. I said, now, see, you can do it right there in that, that corner. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we're looking for uh, some dynamic uh, PowerPoints and some dynamic word to help us. Uh, the theme for the conference is navigating through complexity, 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 uh, troubling times. And uh, the empowerment sessions will give you information on how you can navigate through this season. And uh, it comes from the book of Mark, chapter number four and verse 35, where Jesus told his disciples right before they were to get into the boat, let us go over to the other side. And as they were journeying to the other side, there came a storm and uh, Jesus was asleep in the hindy part of the boat. The Bible says that he was asleep on a pillow. And what we understand about the scriptures is that the di disciples woke him up and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Like Jesus uh, didn't care about them. And sometimes we get in a storm and we feel like Jesus uh, has left us. But Jesus has not left the building. Jesus has not left the body of Christ. Amen. And Jesus rose and he rebuked the storm and, and he quieted the seas and said, peace be still. And uh, showing that he has power not only over diseases and death, but he has power over the elements. 
Amen. Come on, give him a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And he turned to his disciples and he said to them a very poignant question. Where is thy faith? Amen. We don't want to lose our faith in these times. And what overcame their faith was fear. You don't want to allow fear to overcome your faith because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. But love, power, and a sound mind. He said, if you keep your mind stayed on him, he will keep you what? In perfect peace. So as we begin to see in that scripture that that is the theme on this particular Friday and Saturday. And Jesus was with them to bring them to the other side. And we know that we, our confidence and our trust is in the Lord. And what we commit unto the Lord, he's able to perform it until that day. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want you to tune in. And then that following week after um, this particular week, we have our national convocation, and it's also uh, the PCAF national convocation. And it is also going to be um, uh, more than it's going to be virtual, but they have went all out. They didn't spare any expenses. They did it in a corporate way. Um, you have to go on to the PCAF uh, website and register in order to get into those particular uh, services in those empowerment sessions and also to the, the the night services are going to be free and open to the public and streamed on live streaming so you don't want to miss that also too um, we all know that um, they have uh, ele elevated me and appointed me to Suffolk and Bishop elect and then uh, come on. amen amen in uh, next Sunday, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday during that convocation, um, they're going to be, um, it's not an ordination, Lord have mercy, it's a consecration. Uh, they're going to consecrate uh, the district elders and the bishops, including myself. So you can turn in. I'll give you all that information so you all can tune in and be doing it virtually. Amen. At that particular time, maybe I have Pastor Duck stand there and, and anoint me and pray for me. I need somebody to lay hands on me. <laughs> Good Jesus. I need somebody to lay hands on me since it's done virtually. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we are certainly excited about what God is doing in our lives. We're certainly excited about the hand of the Lord. Come on, just give him one more praise. And um, just one other announcement. I was uh, telling my wife and, and actually Sister uh, Nemo put it in my spirit uh, a few weeks ago that uh, we need to have us a little picnic or something, you know, so um, uh, we can have one in the backyard. We'll do our social distancing and we'll have some hot dogs and hamburgers and just little condiments, whatever, you know, just so that um, we don't want to allow ourselves to uh, not miss on the, 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 the ability to fellowship in a safe way. Amen. We certainly praise God for safety and we praise God for fellowship. Amen. So we'll be uh, working toward that end and getting things together and uh, make it a safe uh, transition and, and have a good time. You can I wouldn't be mad at you if you got your burger and hamburger and left. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But we don't want to waste opportunities uh, to give God praise and to socialize with our brothers and our sisters. Um, I just wanted to make mention as well, as far as the church, the church is cleaned uh, before and after services. And then we have a professional cleaning crew that comes in every other week, uh, PRI. They come in with their steam cleaners and they uh, clean and steam every inch of this place and including the furniture and the places we don't even use, like our downstairs and our kitchen and stuff, They and our offices and they're steam cleaning everything. So I want to just say that and put your mind at peace and I see that our adults here are wearing their masks and things such as that. 
Amen. And when you come into the door, our greeters, they, uh, uh, we got the sanitation ministry. They own their posts. Amen. <laughs> they taking your temperature, making sure you have a mask on. Come on, give God a praise for our sanitation ministry. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And our ushers are there standing guard uh, just in case anything pop off. Amen. <laughs> they, they, there to, they there to handle the business. <laughs> Amen. So we certainly do thank God for each and every one of you. And we thank God that, um, you know, uh, Bishop Ratcliffe often said, uh, stuck in my spirit. And I see why. Be saved and safe. Amen. Be saved and, and don't throw caution to the wind be safe as well amen so we thank god that uh you all are abiding by uh social distancing regulations and wearing your mace mask and, and using your hand sanitizers and even after you use the restroom they they go in there and sterilize that as well for the next person amen so we here want to be saved and saved amen Amen. Uh, I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians, to the book of Ephesians, chapter number six, uh, Ephesians, chapter number six. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, for he alone has done great things. He alone has done great things. We want to ask the church to stand as we begin to get into the word of God. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you on today. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing. We thank you for this word that we're about to hear on today. We ask you, Lord, that you feed our souls and feed our spirits and our bodies. Give us this word, Lord, that we may live by it that we may prosper in it, that we may congest it, and that we may be able, Lord, to perform it, even at that particular day and that hour and time. Lord, we thank you and praise you, give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, send that spirit that makes preaching easy. In Jesus' name, amen. And I just want to uh, you to go with me to uh, Ephesians chapter number six, and we just want uh, one verse of scripture there in uh, verse number 11. It tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let us read that again. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And uh, just one more time, I want to just put that into your spirit. Uh, put on the whole armor of God for the purpose that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And our subject on today is let's get it on. Amen. Let's get it on. And uh, we see here in this uh, particular uh, passage, in this particular epistle, Paul is headed toward the end and to the conclusion of this epistle. And just like the Apostle Paul, he sometimes gives a litany of advice, he, especially in the book of Romans. If you go to the last book of uh, chapter in the book of Romans, Paul numbers uh, some things to give people advice. And it's like here, Paul starts this chapter off with telling the children to obey the parents. Uh, we're living in a time where we need the children to obey the parents. Amen. He says, honor thy mother and thy father. Uh, amen. For it has a great reward. It's the first commandment with promised amen to the family and we see then he goes on and tells the servants to obey their masters which means that the workers should obey their employers not with high service not just standing around getting busy when you see the boss come through the door 
but to honor them and to work as unto the Lord. And then he tells the fathers to uh, not provoke the children and, uh, and to love them and to encourage them and strengthen them. And then he goes down to verse number 10. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. It's, it's necessary for us to be strong in the Lord. In order to perform any of the things that God has commanded us, uh, we have to be strong. We have to be empowered by the Lord. You can do nothing of yourself, but you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Which that simply means is, is that whatever God has assigned to you, you're able to do it through the Lord Christ Jesus. It doesn't mean that if God has not desired that you should fly an airplane, that you have trouble flying the airplane uh, uh, and you can't comprehend those things, that is not what God called you to do. Don't blame God. But whatever God has assigned for you in your life, whatever uh, life may bring you, whatever you find on your plate, you can be able, you can be well assured that you're able to handle it through Christ Jesus. Why? Because the Lord has said that he has put no temptation upon you that you are unable to bear. But with every temptation, God has made a way of escape. How many of you believe that on today that you can do all things, that God is on your side, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Whatever may happen in your life, whatever may happen in your body, what may happen with concerning your family, whatever may happen concerning anything that concerns you, uh, God says you're able to bear it. God says you're able to handle it. So the scripture says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered by the Lord. That means that we have to have a strong relationship with God to be able to endure the things that come into our life. There's a lot of life situations that happen unto us. And I'm here to tell you that only those that have a long relationship with the Lord are able to survive. They are able to go through. When I see people that have lost loved ones and I see people that are grieving, that I see people that have lost things in their life and sometimes those losses cause them to go berserk. Sometimes those losses cause them to go off the deep end. And when I sit back and analyze those kind of reactions to losses, it's usually because they don't have a relationship with the Lord. But those that have the Lord on their side, they can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and not fear any evil. Why? Because the Lord is with them. Those that have the Lord that is on their side, they're more optimistic. They're more looking forward to what the Lord is going to do out of this. Uh, who am I talking to today? That you're looking forward to see what the Lord is going to do after this. There's going to be an after this with the Lord. There is always a next after whatever you're going through. You have to rest assured that God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And there is a next level. There is a next level. Uh, there's going to be a testimony after this. There's going to be a praise after this. There's going to be a word of encouragement after this. After this, we're going to be built up and be strong in the Lord. That's why the Bible says, don't cast away your confidence for it have great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. You have a need of endurance that after you have done the will of God, after you have prayed, after you have fasted, after you have trusted in the Lord that you might receive the promise. Uh, how many of you today are in it to win it? How many of you today are 
putting all of your eggs in the basket of the Lord that you're trusting in him because you realize that in him you live and him you move and him you have your being so Paul in this particular scripture he says for us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and that word power it means dudamus it means the ability uh, to be able to activate your faith uh, and move to the next level uh, my brothers and sisters my sisters and brothers the conditions and the situations that come into our lives uh, they could bring us down they can cause us to lose hope sometimes but uh, when you have confidence in the Lord and you're trusting in the Lord and in the power of his might when you touch the Lord when you touch the hem of his garment he gives you the power to explode he gives you the power to move to the next level he gives you the ability to do the impossible that's what that word power means it means to step out on God in faith it means to walk by faith and not by sight not not just any kind of faith but faith in our lord and savior jesus christ faith in in the one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think my god when we walk in power when we walk in authority we have the ability uh, to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover we have the ability to tread upon serpents and to tread upon scorpions uh, serpents relate to the devil uh, scorpions relate to evil people that try to hold you down and if you trust in the lord and and in the power of his might there is no weapon that is formed against you uh, that shall prosper when you're trusting in God it brings you to another level of, of deliverance it brings you to another level of being able to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ my brothers and sisters I want to tell you here today that there's nothing in your life that you should be doing outside of God God wants to be integral in your life. God wants to work through you and do his most perfect will while you give him glory at all times. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and not lean to your own understanding, but you ought to acknowledge your God in all of your ways so that he can direct your path uh, my brothers and sisters a person uh, that don't acknowledge God and don't trust in the Lord uh, is a person that is destined for failure uh, they expose themselves to the power of the enemy uh, they expose themselves to the wiles and the power of those that are seeking to destroy them uh, but those that trust in God they find a secret place uh, the Bible Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high they shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and then you have this testimony that you can say that the Lord is my refuge he is my rock he is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear uh, you get a certain boldness you say the Lord is the strength of my life Life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the enemy and the wicked, when they come upon me to eat of my flesh, you boast in the Lord and say they shall stumble and they shall fall. Oh, when war shall come against me, you don't fear, but you say in this will I be confident that one thing have I desired 
of the Lord and that will I seek after that I might dwell how many of you have that heart and that mind that I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life my heart is made up is your heart made up today and your mind is fixed that no matter what comes my way I'm going to acknowledge God I'm going to call on the name of the Lord because he is my refuge. He is my strength. He is my shield and my buckler. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we can quote a lot of scriptures. I know I can. But you know there comes a time where you've got to allow God to prove his word to you. There comes a time where you have to stand still and allow God to operate as God. There comes a time where you have to fall down on your knees and begin to say Lord I have lost my way I have come up against some situations that I've never come up against before and Lord I'm stepping out on you Lord I'm trusting in you and now Lord I need you to perform your good work I need you to show up and not only show up but show out uh, and I'll give you the praise uh, and I'll give you the glory uh, and I'll give you the honor. Uh, that's what Paul was saying to the church. Uh, he was saying be strong in the Lord uh, and in the power of his might. Uh, don't try to be strong in your power. Uh, don't try to be strong in somebody else's power. Uh, don't try to be strong in somebody else's uh, theology or philosophy but be strong in the theology that is in God for God I live and for God I die be strong in the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation I don't need to know about Confucius I don't need to know about Buddha but I need to know about God I need to know about my savior. I need to know about my deliverer. I need to know about my hope that lies beyond the grave. I need to know about the great and precious promises that God has made to them that trust him. To those who are looking for God to manifest his glory, to manifest his power. I need to know about how to walk by faith and not by sight because the enemy wants to kill he wants to steal he wants to destroy but I gotta know that greater oh my God in heaven that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world I gotta know that I gotta hope that lies beyond the grave like Paul said cast not not away your confidence like Job said though you slay me yet will I trust in you you ought to clap your hands if you're trusting in the Lord if you're going to endure you ought to clap your hands if you're going to abide in the power and of his might you ought to clap your hands and give your God a praise I feel like what David said. I was young, but now I'm old. I was young, but now I'm old. I never, no, no, never, 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 never seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seed begging bread. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seed begging bread. For he that keepeth Israel, he never 
slumbers, nor does he sleep. He that keepeth Israel, there's a pillar of fire by day, up by night, and a cloud by day. You ought to give your God a praise. Oh my God, I feel yokes being broke. I feel echoes. People receiving their strength. People getting their healing. People getting glory out of every temptation. You ought to give God a praise. Oh yes, my God, my God in heaven. Let me cut across this field. If you just sit down just for a minute, let me recompose myself because I feel like something in the atmosphere is telling me to go ahead. There's something down on the inside. Uh, it's just like fire. Tell your neighbor, it's just like fire. It's just like fire. Shut up in our bones. And that's where strength comes from. In that story about the scripture that I just quoted about Jeremiah. You see, Jeremiah, he was sent to operate and be a representative of God. Uh, but situations uh, and conditions uh, didn't work out the way Jeremiah uh, thought they would. So he decided uh, that he was going to take a break. Uh, and that's just like uh, some of us sometimes. Uh, we know that we're called. Uh, we know that we are ordained of God. Uh, but sometimes your coldness, uh, sometimes your holy sanctifiedness doesn't operate the way you think it should operate but that doesn't deter the calling that God has on your life God knows the thoughts God knows the plans that he has for you not thoughts of evil oh, to bring you to your expected end it because you got hard times doesn't mean that you have not been called because tribulation is in your way doesn't mean that God has not sanctified you doesn't mean that God has not called you doesn't mean that God is not with you and that's what Jeremiah found out when he started to take his break there was something down on the inside it became like fire set up in his bones when you try to take a break God will show up when you decide that Lord I've had enough your God will show up when you feel like you can't go any further your God will show up he'll show up like fire he'll show up like an anointing he'll show up like a revival he'll show up with power to cause you to go ahead to go ahead to go ahead you you ought to give God a praise. And that's why Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said, put on the whole armor. You got to get it on. If you're going to fight this fight, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand and to withstand all the power all the wickedness that the enemy is trying to throw your way he's saying in a nutshell put on Jesus put on the Lord put on Jesus put on the Lord put on Jesus that's that armor that's your protection that's your deliverance that's your joy that's your peace that's your strength that's your might that's your salvation that's your righteousness that's your word that's your gospel that's your shield get it on get it on get it on you ought to give God a praise he said thanks be to God that giveth us the victory 
through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get it on. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. All principalities, all powers, all wickedness has been cast under the feet of Jesus. Let's get it on. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ through fasting, through prayer, through studying his word, being obedient, especially when it seems like you're in a rock and a hard place. That's the time to really focus in and be obedient. Because he that shall come, I said he that shall come, he will come. And he will not tarry. Let's get it on. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Sister Shakara almost took me to another level. She raised her hands up in victory. Anytime you there's victory in Jesus. There's deliverance in Jesus. Let everybody in the sanctuary raise your hands in victory. Victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. My God, is there one here today that desires water baptism? Amen. Hallelujah. If you repent of all your sins, God will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let's draw nigh to him. He said, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Let's get it on. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. A lot of us in my closing for real. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. A lot of us know that we've been called by God. Know that God's hand is on our life. That we've been changed. But we run into trouble. We run into struggle. Amen. And sometimes that makes us want to doubt whether or not God called us. But that's a part of it. That's a part of the call. Amen. That's a part of the deliverance. Hallelujah, my God. In other words, God has called you so that he can show forth his glory in your life. So therefore, you need some rain. You need some struggle. You need some problems. You need some situations. So that he can be the problem solver. So that he can do what he does best to deliver those out of all types of ungodly situations. Oh my God. Hallelujah. My God, I got a, I got a car out there in the, in the driveway. Amen. And that baby, that baby does 160. Hallelujah. Now, and I was driving one day and the enemy was tempting me. He said, now, you know, this car is built to do that 160. Why don't you try it? <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I had to rebuke that thought and come to myself. Brother Steve, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to rebuke something. Come to yourself. Hallelujah. But, but it's built for that. You got to realize in your mind that I'm built for this. I'm built for this. I'm built for this. I'm built to endure. I'm built to last. I'm built to hold on. I'm built to serve my God. I'm built. I'm built for the Holy Ghost. I'm built for the deliverance. I'm built for this. I'm built for this. 
So whatever situation you're facing, say I'm built for this. Whatever trial and tribulation, say I'm built for this. Whatever sickness, whatever disease, I'm built for this. Whatever temptation, I'm built for this. Hallelujah. It's only one Holy Ghost and one size fits all. And God made you so that you can be built for him. Hallelujah. Come on, just stand to your feet and give God a praise. I feel another sermon coming on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So right now we want to have Pastor Duck come and pray for you all. Amen. And dismiss you. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Can y'all just jump with me just for a moment? Just jump for joy. Hey, if you can. I want you to hurt nothing. Hey, but give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Crystal, see what you brought in? Hallelujah. Ma, 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 ma. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. You don't get it on, you ain't going to be built for it. You got to get it on. Hallelujah. Hey, I ain't talking about Marvin Gaye's, let's get it on either. I'm talking about getting on the whole arm of God. Put on the whole arm of God. That you might stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if you don't put it on, you sure won't be built for it. But there's some things going to come your way. They'll almost knock you down. But you got to be built for it. Amen. And God sends it your way because he knows that you're built for it. Amen. Hallelujah. All the reason you don't go through it is you ain't built for it. Hallelujah. Ah, that was beautiful, Bishop. Beautiful, beautiful. My soul, I got joy bells ringing down in my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I see why the scriptures say don't forsake yourselves to the assembling of one another in the house of the Lord. Amen. You can't get this at home watching it on the TV. You can't get this at home. Hallelujah. This was a fresh word, a rhema word from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, let every heart pray. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this word, Lord, that you've given our bishop this morning. We thank you for blessing our souls, Lord, going down to the depths of our soul. We praise you, O oh God. Praise you for your spirit. Praise you for your word. Praise you for your joy. Praise you for your anointing. Praise you for your love. Praise you for your saving and keeping power. Praise you for bringing us out, Lord. Praise you for taking us through, Lord. Praise you for a man to serve you, Lord. Praise you for a man to keep on, Lord. Walking in the way of righteousness, hallelujah. We praise you, oh God. Lord, we ask that you look on each and every soul here this morning. We ask that you bless them, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Continue to keep them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we ask that you protect us, Lord, from all hurt, harm, and danger. Seen and unseen land, Lord. Let your blood continue to cover us in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring down everything, Lord, every stronghold in our lives. Oh, move everything in us that's not like you, Lord, and fill us with your goodness, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Put in us your thoughts. Work the will and the doing us, Lord, of your good pleasure, and use us, Lord, to your glory. Keep us in thy love. Oh, hallelujah. Now, Lord, we're asking that you dismiss us from this place, but not from your presence. Oh, hallelujah. Let this word abound in us, Lord. Let this word go through us, Lord. Let this word compel us, Lord, to walk upright before you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 With uplifted hands, follow peace. With all men, holiness without the which no man shall see the Lord. In Jesus' name, let's get it on.